I'm starting a thing apparently because I think there's sometimes some stuff out there that you can get, especially in the hardware, like in this video, where if you know, you know. And if you don't know, then you may not even know that you don't know. And I didn't. Well, I kind of did, but not really. But now I do. And in a moment, so will you, assuming you didn't, which you probably did. These are not a total mystery. I mean, if you take a look behind your extruder, you'll see one. And a different sort under here too. It's just that maybe like me, you haven't joined the dots and considered using them yourself. Especially if like me, you come to 3D printing from a non-engineering background. They are called brass insert nuts, or inset nuts, or threaded inserts, or embedded nuts, or heat set inserts, or a whole load of other things apparently. And sure, there's alternative ways of using screws with 3D printing. You can print a screw thread on a pre 3D printer. It's not exactly reliable or strong, even as impressive as the fact that you can do it might be. That being said, you can also just make a hole and either use self-tapping screws or bolts, the latter being quite hard to size correctly, but it will work. And of course, you can just use nuts and washers, uh, including all the various types of nuts and washers that you can get. You can also drill PLA, and that will work just fine as long as you don't heat it up too much and, you know, cause it to go soft. So anyway, back to these things. You can get them in a few styles, but the ones that I have are the absolute cheapest. Other styles have improvements in them, like a ring around the base to help with alignment when inserting, but I have the cheapo rubbish ones, so whatever. I didn't want to have to delay the video while I wait for better ones to arrive, as it won't add anything of substance, really. In terms of designing for them, just add a hole that's right size for the insert. If the manufacturer of the insert is being nice, they will specify a hole size. But if they're not, like mine for example, then measure the non-knurled bit with calipers and go about that size, or alternatively go about half a millimetre under the external dimension. Remember to allow for shrinkage, especially if you're printing with three outer walls or more. That being said, I think they're fairly forgiving as long as you have space for the surrounding plastic to move into, i.e. you're not using 100% infill. For example here, I designed a test piece to use an M3 size insert and I included holes both the same as the non knurled diameter of 3.8mm and another one of half a mil less than the external diameter which came out to be 4.3mm. Inserting them is a pretty simple process if you know how. The best way, so far as I'm aware, is to heat a soldering iron to around the top end of the filament's temperature range that you're using. So for PLA that would be around 230 degrees C. And choose a tip that fits inside the nut well so that it will hold it as well while you're putting it in. Then gently just push it in, gently being the operative word. Temperature controlled soldering irons like the one I'm using are very cheap now. I think this one only cost around £8 here in the UK. If getting the nuts in straight is a priority, then I suggest using a square or jig of some sort, because by default they almost always go in a bit wonky. I also had minor issues with some of the PLA getting into the threads somehow. It can be removed with a bit of screw force after, um, after it's cooled down, but it's an interesting idea that this could work as a kind of locking compound if you heated up the thread while screwing in. That's an interesting side thought. So in the end, both sizes of hole that I tried worked out fine, thus demonstrating the huge tolerances you have when working with these things. I also made a later iteration where I added a recess around the hole for easier alignment with the nuts that I have. This helps to get them in the right place. You can watch me struggling with Fusion 360 here. Seriously though, this whole part was just made by Sketch Extrude Sketch Extrude. At some point I should probably do a Fusion 360 for people who can't use Fusion 360 video because that's about the level that I normally work at. So anyway, that's about all I wanted to show you. Now you know, assuming you didn't already. Now more of this kind of thing to come. If you enjoyed it, then you know which buttons to press. I will see you next time.